Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to Bean K Bees for another episode of our beekeeping crash course. Today we are going to talk about swarm control in both uh, prevention and reaction. So let's just get started. <clears throat> okay, so to prevent swarming, you have to understand what swarming is. Uh, and in the ideal circumstances, swarming is a way for bees to propagate, for one hive to make more hives and create more bees in the area with those genetics. Uh, now that type of swarm is called a reproductive swarm and uh, that happens only in a certain time of year. You can dissuade them from that uh, by both adding more room, allowing them space to grow into, and uh, at some point during the swarm slash build up portion of the spring, or, uh, performing a swarm, uh, and at some point during the swarm portion of the year, the build up portion of the year, performing a swarm simulation split. Now, of course, we're going to go through how to split hives, uh, I think, in the next episode of the beekeeping crash course. So I won't get into that too much here. But generally, uh, to try to prevent swarms, like I said, you're going to try to make sure that the queen has space to lay and that the colony has space to grow into. <clears throat> um, and then, like I said, to perform a swarm prevention split uh, before the end of the swarm portion of the year which is essentially where you move the queen, the original queen, and a bunch of bees and resources off to a new location to convince both halves that they've done what they needed to do and they've swarmed. Now, in reaction uh, to a swarm, that's different. Now, both uh, reacting in terms of just seeing queen cells or reacting in terms of seeing a swarm leave your hive uh, generally your process is going to be the same for the parent hive and that is to get into that colony and remove all of the excess queen cells uh, because as a hive swarms in the swarm portion of the year they're not just going to send out one they're going to send out as many as they have enough bees and resources to send out so I know lots of beginning beekeepers see the swarm leave and think, oh, okay, well that happened and I don't have to worry about that again, just to see over the course of the next couple of days, many more swarms leave in uh, exceedingly smaller and smaller sizes. Those swarms are called after swarms or secondary swarms, and they contain virgin queens from the myriad queen cells that are probably in that hive. So. If you know that your hive is either preparing to swarm or has swarmed already, removing all of the queen cells but one or two is a good idea to prevent those excess swarms from being sent out. Now if, she ha if your original queen hasn't left already and you have some queen cells, then you're in a great, uh, a great place. That is a, a good situation to be in because you can perform a swarm simulation split and just leave one or two of the main swarm cells in that parent queenless hive uh, for them to continue throughout their process. That does what they wanted to do. It, it removes uh, some bees from this parent hive and allows the parent hive to build up and, and create a queen themselves. So if you catch the swarm that leaves your hive, uh, the process for that is uh, very similar to dealing with a package of bees and that is essentially you want to dump all of those bees into the colony give them a frame of drawn comb if you can or even a frame of brood from another one of your hives that'll help them uh, be convinced to stay but other than that give them all of your blank frames because swarms leave engorged on sugar and they know that they need to build comb and they are filled with comb or wax producing bees because uh, bees only produce wax at a certain portion of their life and uh, that just so happens to be the exact age of bees that uh, are, are consistent of, of mostly in those swarms. So these swarms have tons of wax producing bees. All they want to do is produce wax and so you should give them all of your blank foundation so that they can do that. If you're concerned about your swarm leaving after you've installed them into a hive, you can put them above a queen excluder. 
Um, that is essentially just to put the queen excluder right underneath the hive like that. Obviously a little better than that, a little cleaner. Uh, but that will prevent the queen from getting down and out through the hive and prevent them from swarming off into a different location. And then after a few days, you can get back in and remove that queen excluder with no worry of them leaving. Here is a picture of a big old swarm we caught uh, off the side of an apple orchard maybe five or six years ago. Um, the apple orchard had a bunch of bees that were brought in to pollinate that field. And uh, we caught this swarm, you know, one week. And then two weeks later, we showed back up to do a cutout on a tree that was right next to this tree. So we got two colonies from that yard uh, that year. We don't do too much of this stuff anymore because we've got enough bees of our own to play with. But those were fun days. All right, so I think that is it. Um, obviously, there's a lot more to swarm prevention and all that, but these are the, the, the basics. So if you have any questions on uh, preventing the swarms or swarm uh, simulation splits or anything like that, uh, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will chat with you about them there. Uh, but otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Get out and enjoy this wonderful spring weather and have some fun with your bees. See ya.